Okay, welcome everybody to Coffee and Art in the Morning, Monday morning. We got books. Oh, yes, we got books. So I'm going to do flips of these. I'm going to do a little bit of a studio update. I did organize over the weekend. I actually got my drafting table cleared off so it doesn't look like Sandra's. Oh, I'm sorry, Sandra. Did I just call you out? <laughs> Sandra's uh, cleaning and organizing her space, too. That's all I'll say. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we're going to go through that. I wanted to show you a couple of um, things that I'm doing in the Society Idea Collectors and a couple other little, uh, another little tip and technique. One I got off of Instagram, one I got off of, I think, Pinterest. Well, I didn't go to Pinterest. I had never had time to go to Pinterest, but somebody posted it off of Pinterest. So, uh, oh, good. Oh, oh, good. Thanks, Mirka. Mirka says, second time here on live stream. Uh, lots of time in YouTube. Thanks, guys. And thanks if you're watching on YouTube, the recording. This is a live show on Ustream.tv. I stream every Monday and Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, and the occasional Friday. But I never can announce that, so, so it's, I just call it an impromptu Friday because sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. So for my birthday... Uh, some of the girls sent me birthday money and Hobby Lobby cards and uh, Amazon, Amazon Amazon gift money. And that's where I got these with my birthday uh, Amazon money. And I let the girls pick two books. They picked these totally without, I just bought them sight unseen. Well, actually I have seen, since I, I realized this, Barb did a, Barb did a show out of this one. And somebody else has this book, too, but I can't remember who. I thought it was Paula, but I don't think it's Paula. Somebody else has this book besides Barb. So, um, but you girls pick these two, and I pick this one. So we're going to do flip through of all of them. Then we'll decide which one we want to do a project. So if you're watching on YouTube and we come to a slow part or a part that's boring or repetitious, you can go zzz, zzz. These girls here are stuck. <laughs> they can't fast forward. So, um, yes, I saw that, Jean. I did not realize that. Patty, Inky Obsessions, because I just flipped through. I haven't read them, but I flipped through them. Um, yeah, our Patty Tolly Parish is in this one. And it's going to, of course, flash out till I adjust the light to the white paper. But Patty Tolly Parish, Inky Obsessions is in this one. So, yay, Patty. I did not know she was in this book. Well, I guess maybe some of you guys did. But I've not even seen this book in the stores. I've heard of this one, not ever thought to buy either one. But you guys made me, I mean, ask politely to buy these two. And then I found this one and, and picked this one myself. So those are the books we're going to flip through in a minute. Okay, so as for some updates. Oh, uh, like I said, I was organizing... And I got my drafting table cleaned off. That's the table over on that side under my Mona Lisa, my Jean um, Illusion knitted Mona, Mona Lisa. My drafting table now sits over there instead of under the window because, you know, I rearranged a while back. So on Instagram, and I tried to scroll back to see who it was. And I can't find it. So I don't know if she's, you know, the first one that thought of it. I was probably not. When, you know, I don't know who the first person that thought of using uh, this for uh, what I'm going to show you. But it was the first time I'd seen it. So I would give her credit, but I don't know who it was. But I saw somebody take their washi tapes. Y'all know I was using my these trays like this for washi tapes. I had a bunch of these. And then I had this one desk tray of washi tapes. And, and I keep my little um, embroidery floss plastic cards in here. So when I do giveaways, I, I wrap washi tape around these to give away. So anyway, um, that's how I had my washi tape. In this and in three of the four, three, four of these. Well, for the bulk of them, I put them in my printer tray. <laughs> I love this. They're all in a printer tray. Now, they're not obviously not going to sit on my desk any longer. But everything was starting to encroach onto my space with those little trays. And then I got my ink bottles. And everything was, I was getting less and less room. So I said, I'm going to move my washi, I'm going to move my washi uh, tapes off my desk. 
and I saw somebody use their printer tray. They had a smaller one. I think they had one like this. They had a printer tray like this. And um, you're going to make drapes. <laughs> Janet's going to make drapes. I know. I don't think anybody, well, I don't know. Somebody might have more washi tape than Janet, but I don't know. She'd probably need about three of these trays, which she probably has. She probably has some printer trays. But anyway, <clears throat> so I put all, all the washi in here, and then I left, I left what was in this one in this tray. So, yeah, not enough desk room for uh, all my washi tapes. But I put them in here because look, look how cool this looks. Doesn't that just look cool? And I guess I could hang it if I wanted, but I'd be afraid they'd start rolling out. So this is kind of the configuration I put them in, kind of like this. But it doesn't matter. It's going to sit flat. So I thought, you know, this just is working out really nice. And I can keep it on the table behind me. Do you do you color in a color book today? Uh, no, I am not, Sandra. We have to talk. We're going to go through these books today. <laughs> Sandra from Germany. So anyway, I loved I love this. I will show you though, Sandra from Germany. I did post this on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I did. Um, finish and post let me show you out of tenderful enchantments I did finish and put some there well let me see hang on guys let me try to turn the brightness down just a tad here there um, so you can see the stickles there see the stickles I put stickles in all the yellow bits so everything that's yellow has stickles her hair there there's stickles on all the yellow the butterflies and the clasp it's wanting to flash out guys so yeah <clears throat> so i want to i'll show you that it's not the right color though since i touched the settings hang on let's see what we can do here i messed up the color uh oh hang on i'll probably have to reset it anyway when i start flipping through books but there we go. That I did post this on um, all my social media. Oh, there. I just got... The, see, that's the light from outside. There, that's better. So, yeah. So, you can see the stickles on the yellow there. So, I did finish that. And that's out of Tenderful Enchantments. <clears throat> I am still working on this. For those interested in the color book segments, I am working on tre uh, Treatum. This is in uh, Bennett Klein's, I think it's his newest one, Treat em. And I, of course, I take them out to work on them. And I'm working on this one. I'm doing it in marker and pencil. So you can see, marker goes through, uh, Copic, you know, alcohol markers. I painted, this is all paint and splat, star splatter. And you can see where I still have not colored anything yet. Um, I've not colored, you know, wherever you see just the gray tone. So this is the other thing that I'm working on as far as color book. Um, and then I'm also still working on the Alice in Wonderland, which is going to take, you know, I don't know how long. Hey, Scoobs. So, yeah, so I put my washi tape in this printer tray, and I just love the way it looks. So, again, I saw some girl on Instagram with a smaller tray like this, and I have another huge tray, one that's double this. But it's got all my little old bottles of ink in it. It's got, it's like, it's for an ink bottle, old ink bottle display tray. And it's hanging up above my ink uh, section. So, um, yeah, so this was just the one I just chose to use. Um, did you see he has a whole book called Freebies? I know he has a lot of freebies, and he used to post one every Friday, but I don't have time to do the ones I've got in books, let alone the freebies. So, yeah, I, I just, yeah. <laughs> so let me move my washi out of the way. And 
a couple other updates. Okay, so one of the other updates is my, my syllables journal, you know, doing a page a week. So let me show you this last week in February what I did. It's a, I did a double page. I'm using the backs of the week before. Uh, it gives you more real estate to play with. And also, it just gives you more, more space. So let's see. That's a little bright. Let's just turn the brightness down just a tad. There we go. All right. So what I did for my week two, which is February 4th through February 10th, <clears throat> is this was my birthday week so I took the card this was the card that from everyone all the you streamers um, CB mm -hmm. made this card and it was from everybody she wrote the note and it's from everybody here and so I used that as the main focal point February I got washi tapes I got the weeks I got the stamp days and then over here is where that that the information can be on so I made these little hearts <clears throat> made these little hearts they're double-sided and they have pockets and and I just kind of flipped over like this and then I put the dates on each one and here's where I can write all the information and I just tuck them all into this little pocket so and then anything else like oh, let me just grab this real quick hang on so anything else that comes that I want to put in here, like this birthday card from Janet, happy birthday to someone who has touched, oh, so many lives. I hope you don't have cooties. <laughs> and she has little cooties there. <laughs> so like this, so I can tuck that in there, you see? So if you have a little pocket, this can be an envelope. And I just stapled this on here. This just staples right there. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is my syllables journal for the, the second week of February. I try to show them all to you guys, but, um, you know, sometimes I get behind on, you know, I showed you that last week of January. I think I've shown you. And I, I have other things tucked in here. I have blank pages in here I can tuck things in. I started making, I uh, started practicing some brush lettering. So every month, um, I just wrote the month in brush lettering. I went through my book here and wrote the month like this. You can still see the pencil lines where I just, I just took pencil lines and went like that not measured or anything I just drew some pencil lines to put the month in and I did that with every month like here's March see I did that for every month um, so anyway here is my um, there's my last week of February last week this past week of February so I know <laughs> I know Joe Eileen says Janet sends such heartwarming cards <laughs> but anyway so yeah little hearts with the dates and you can you know tuck things in the heart put your uh, whatever you did that week in the hearts or however I'm, I'm all about the ideas the society of idea collectors and this is the syllables journal using bits see I had this piece of paper from a flow magazine or these pieces of paper from flow magazine and cut those hearts. I just hand cut them, guys. There's not a punch. It's not a, it's not a um, anything. It's just I just hand free hand cut some hearts. So I'll put I'll keep that in there too, Janet. So I can just you know it just looks good. I hand cut the February out of a magazine just, and then just kind of doodle around. It started with a splotch of pink, and then there's my CB card that I just I just washi taped it in. And uh, so, yeah, it's fun. And I still have room to write anything else I need. So if, I, if something else comes up, I can write it in here. I have a whole bunch of other birthday cards. Obviously, they're not going to all fit in here. Same for Christmas cards. You can't fit them all in this. Because it's already getting, look, let me show you. Look how bulked up it is already. And that's how far we are right there. This is the second week of February. And look, you know, and this is enough for one this is one ever 52 weeks right here so this is all the year and I love me some rag flags so I can't help but put those on there somewhere <laughs> and there's Mona my muse so yeah so that's what that's my a uh, syllables journal okay 
then what else did I have here? Did I get it? show everything? Oh, one other thing, and I saw this on, and I remember, um, I forget her name, uh, J uh, Jill, uh, no, was it, Jelly, Jelly. Y'all remember when we first started, it's actually she was streaming before me, um, or at the same time I started, Jelly Bean. Y'all remember Jelly Bean? She started streaming when she was, I think she was 13. So that would have been like nine years ago. She, I think she'd be the same age as Cam now. I think she'd be 18. So when she first started streaming, she was like 18. Now I'm going to show you this thing that I saw on online. I don't remember if it's Pinterest or what. Uh, let me get a piece of paper. Um... But I saw Jelly do something similar, and probably Tim Holtz, you know, I don't know, you know. But I've seen people do this with, she did it, with um, the ink pads. Let me see, let me get a distress pad here or something. I don't know if I'm grabbing one that's still working, but. <clears throat> so what she would do, you're, Jordan, Jordan, thank you. I couldn't remember her name. It was Jelly Bean. Yeah, Jordan. Thank you. Uh, remember she would take to save money. She would take, and, and, and I think Tim's done this too. You put your ink on plastic, and then you can take, um, well, she didn't have a water brush. She just had a brush, a regular brush. And you could lift up this and paint with it, right? So you could lift it up and paint with your, um, like make a watercolor out of your inks. Well, I remember her doing that back nine years ago. Well, I saw somebody else recently, and I got a lot of water on here. Hang on. I saw somebody else recently do that similar, and I've seen it with, um, and I've done this. I don't do it because I don't need to do it. But if you want to um, make your own, like, watercolor, yeah. Make your own, like, watercolor, you can just, you know, and you can do this with Neo Colors, and but take, you know, your uh, water Crayola, and then you can use that to make watercolor as well. But by putting it on plastic, you know, like we around here will take the Neo Color crayons and I scrape them onto a porcelain tray and pick it up off the porcelain tray, the Neo Color crayons. Well, you can do the same kind of thing on plastic. Um, but what I've seen people do lately, and it's just kind of a new, it's, I don't know. I, and y'all have probably all seen it. It was new to me. Um, <clears throat> put that away. Is they're taking and putting their whatever on here and smearing it on. So I'm going to do that with the, now I, the person that I saw do this, they don't, they weren't using ink, but I'm going to use ink because we got our inks. So this is just a little society idea collector's tip on another tip. Last week we did drips. This is a tip. <laughs> anything laminated, yeah, anything plasticky. And I'm just going to put one little drop, okay? But what I've seen people doing is putting the stuff on the plastic and picking it up and smearing it just to get a background. Um, so I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water. Can't add much because it'll drip, but you know. So kind of like this and... Let's just kind of move it around. And what they're doing is they're taking it and smearing it like that. They're just smearing the plastic and making it look like this, essentially, as a background. Yeah, drips and tips by Dee. <laughs> so anyway, y'all play with that idea. Like I said, I don't know who I saw. I've seen a bunch of people doing that with plastic. But I remember when Jordan, Jelly Bean Jordan, nine years ago, was doing her, um, you know, putting her, uh, let's try it with that. Let's just put some on there. And I'll add just a touch of water just to kind of, well, I guess I could do it with the water brush here. And just kind of smearing it around. And they're just kind of smack and dragging, you know, sort of like that. But they're making whole backgrounds to make it look like watercolor, you know. Um, 
So, smack and dragon with inks, kind of, yeah. But anyway, they're using they're using the plastic to kind of mush it around. So I just wanted to share that with you. I left this out to show. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Now we'll get on to the books. All right, let's move that to the side. So there we go. I don't know if that's useful to anybody, but I thought it was kind of cool. All right, so let's bring our books back in here now, and we're going to flip through them. So I'll spend, hey, honey, Jill, anybody else popping in? Thanks for being here. Sip of coffee here. I'm going to flip through these books, and then I'll stop the recording and start another one. for Y'all can help me pick a project out of these books. Okay. So these are the two that the girls picked. I bought Sight Unseen. I said pick, pick a book, and they picked two. So I bought two, Sight Unseen. They picked these books. I picked this one. And so we have three to look through. So let's go ahead and start, since we already talked about Patty being in this one. And I will zoom in one click here. Uh-oh, what happened to my autofocus? Let's get back. There we go. Okay. So this is Abstracts in Acrylic and Ink by Jody Ohl, O-H-L. And we lost some of the, we, I got that thing back by zooming in. Weird. See that line there? I don't know what happened, but I think it should, we'll, we'll test it out. You know, yeah, the struggle is real, people. <laughs> A playful painting workshop. Okay, I got these all on Amazon. This is normally $24.99. That's not what I paid for it on Amazon. It was probably, you know, $12, something like that on Amazon. Okay, so I have flipped through these. I've not read read them. Uh, of any of them that I've read the most, it would probably be this one. But So we're going to do flip throughs. Y'all kind of keep in mind what you might you like when I show books. Thanks, Diane. Hey, Lori. Anybody else? Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, so I've not read the projects, what I need, what to, you know, we're just, we're going to first look at the books and then we will, because they're always eye candy regardless, okay? So the contents are, of course, the introduction, the supplies, understanding why you paint and where inspiration can be found, getting started and building your knowledge, experimenting with mediums, understanding and applying art and design, putting your skills to work. Exploring shapes and patterns, experimenting with inks and acrylics, abstract collage, finishing options and contributors, final words, resources, index, and about the author. So, there's the contents. So, I am not going to, obviously not going to read you the books, but I want to, you know, show them to you and we'll see. Okay, I lost my, is this, well, I mean, I don't expect it to be focused enough to read it, but yeah, okay. That one zoom click in, just like, you know. Hey, uh, Ter Third Terry. So, supplies and creative inspiration. And see, look, inks and acrylic. Because, you know, that's what it is. Acrylic and ink. <clears throat> and I love, look at that picture right there. Isn't that just joyous? <laughs> I love that picture right there. And, um... Uh, so paints, stencils and stamps, inks and glazes, brushes, scrapers and mark making tools, writing and drawing tools, the odds and ends. Um, okay, it maybe it's just got, I don't think it's got brighter out. Let me just close the blinds there. Maybe that'll take the glare off. That's a little better. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to do something. My Personally, I will do something out of all of them, but I don't know what we're going to do today. Uh, demystifying medium, surface and papers, understanding why you paint and where inspiration can be found, getting started and building your knowledge. While there are many approaches on how to get started painting abstract, my philosophy, philosophy is to simply start. Okay, so that's pretty much sums that up. <laughs> I'm not going to actually, I, you know, obviously I'm not going to read the whole book. Working fast and small. So she looks like she's working on something about ATC size cards here. 
If you all have questions, put them in caps because otherwise I won't see um, you're talking to me. You're talking to me? Okay, so um, making all different marks and using the roller. And a lot of this stuff, guys, let's just be honest. A lot of the stuff we have probably attempted in some form or fashion. Um, but we're going to try some of these projects, you know, just like we do a step-by-step -step color book something. You know, the like the eye we did or Mark Crilly's Realism Challenge or, you know, we're going to... We'll, we'll play. How to move past the blank canvas. Here she's just got a bunch of doodles here. Look, starts with some scribbles. And that's one of the things that this book talks about. Taking your personal doodles and turning them into paintings. So that's kind of this. You know, they all kind of cross over. You like the step outs that, sh that Jody, do, uh, Jody O does? So here's some different scribbles and stuff and then she starts defining the shapes you know she takes her scribbles there and then she starts defining picking out shapes we could you know I'll, I'll uh let me get some um post-its and we'll you know maybe attempt a couple of these i don't know that we're going to do full-on paintings you know but we can you know do test some of the techniques right Okay, uh, using Upo paper. Now, I don't have Upo paper. I've never used Upo paper. I think someone sent me a sample sometime, but I don't even remember what it did when I used it. Jean uses Upo. I think Eileen uses Upo. I don't know who else. All God's children use Upo. <laughs> but anyway, um, I guess it's a shiny paper. Jean, is that it? It's a slick, shiny uh, resist type paper. I, am I correct in that? If Jean's still here. Or whoever wants to talk about Yupo. Um, but anyway. So she has the Yupo paper backgrounds. And see how the paint or ink lies on top. And then you can scrape into it. To get back down to the original paper. So I'm thinking that's the benefit of that. Is that you can put your inks down. And then scrape into it with your different tools. And get the marks. See like there. It's not paper. It's synthetic. So it's non-porous. Okay, so it's like a plastic jean. Is it like a, pla a plastic covered paper? And Duralar. Okay. So yeah, it's it's like a it's like a you can scrape it back. And, uh, you know, Paula's done that for a long time with just using gesso. I don't know how much difference it would be, you know. But, you know, gessoing and painting over it and scraping back, wiping back. Anyway. Okay, texture tiles. Here she's kind of doing the same thing, but with tiles. She's doing some stamping, some mark making, and then sealing. She's sealing here. I'm just going to kind of flip through, guys. Plasticky. Okay. Here's some samples. Experimenting with mediums. So we'll go back to this step. You know, maybe just do, maybe we'll try to do something out of each book. Uh, after I show the books, I'm going to stop this recording and we'll start another one for projects. Um, you know, start by doing some, just some doodles and, um, and making something with them. Using crackle paint. I haven't used crackle paint in forever, but there, let's come make it a comeback. Leveling mediums, creating acrylic skin. Okay, well, we always have those around here because, let me find a good one. Because I put all my acrylics on plastic um, coffee lids. It's a okay. So Jean says, "Didi, it's a synthetic. Yupo is a synthetic paper, machine made in the USA of a hundred percent polypropylene. It's waterproof, stain resistant, and extremely strong and durable." Thank you. Okay, so I'm put peeling off this plastic skin. Their skin. See, when you turn them over, they're perfectly smooth. Can you see how smooth that is? 
they're just perfectly flat you know this side they're bumpy and this piles of paint there but look see how pretty they are personally I have given away I don't even stacks of this stuff because I don't use it uh, I never really found a I don't like a much a lot of dimension I like flat things <laughs> except like in scrapbooking and stuff like that I like dimension in that but in my art drawing and stuff I don't like a lot of bumpy stuff for one reason when you put it in your books it bulk it um, uh, your drawing books your sketchbooks it um, when you go to, unless you use real thick paper like uh, and even my collage is very flat um, but then when you go to use the back side of the paper it's lumpy and bumpy to draw on so I don't do a lot of it I'm never gonna say I don't ever do it but I don't like a lot of bulk in my drawing books that being said this is not that bulky it's pretty flat as long as you don't get too much on this side but you see how pretty that is so just saying that's what she was talking about uh, hang on pass this up here where did we go up ah, creating an acrylic skin now here she's making very purposeful colors purposeful you know color skins this one is the abstract book yes this is the abstract book if you're just joining us uh, you're still using a small paper plate from years <laughs> thicker and thicker Terry Terry at least move into a coffee lid so it's the <laughs> oh, girl uh, but anyway that's what she's doing here and that's you know she's very purposeful there you know what would probably be really cool I don't know who if anybody would do it it would be Zandra of in our group but the pores you know the pores that people do the what do they call it dirty pores and they put a bunch of acrylics and mediums in a in a cup and put it on there and they swirl it around and lift the cup and the paint goes everywhere if you did that on glass a piece of glass and let it dry and peel that baby up I bet that would be cool <laughs> okay Terry do you want me to send you one of these Terry Terry says she doesn't buy this kind of coffee I can send you one of these Terry it'll last you your lifetime <laughs> and you can keep peeling it up <laughs> Terry trouble <laughs> we'll send this to you Terry <laughs> I'll even send this particular paint skin to you so yeah Terry my mod Terry we're gonna send that to her <laughs> Okay. over on the happy mail okay so anyway that would probably be um, that would probably be very cool to do one of those swirly pours on glass and peel it up I don't think I've seen anybody do that not saying they haven't everybody's done something like that something okay gel medium and gesso transfer we've done transfers a lot with um, especially magazine images but I'm you know we there's variations on all this stuff you're welcome Terry uh, non-commercial add-ins I'm not sure what she's meaning by that she looks like she's got some egg there that looks like eggshell let's see yep I think that's what it is well she doesn't say add-ins you can anything around oh yeah it is eggshells so eggshells to make it look like a landscape there remember this is abstracts people abstracts <clears throat> how to create stains glazes and veils there's a lot of good information I mean especially you know I'm not very I don't use a lot of glaze and stuff like that so I mean I use my golden matte medium for gluing down my collage and I know the resist properties that it has when I paint over it but I'm not you know there's thousands well I don't know about thousands hundreds probably of glazes in different ways um, adding scribbles with a pencil adding a stain adding a glaze building up the layers adding a veil scratch into the paint add a pop of color and final details excuse me I need a sip of coffee here hey Gigi understanding and applying art and design 
elements of art and principles of design. Again, guys, I'm going to love to read every bit of this, but I haven't yet. Uh, creating your own colors, your own. She's mixing some colors there. And look at this landscape. I mean, it looks like a landscape to me. <laughs> um, painting, painted papers and painted and painting, making your own paint, uh, papers and things. And again, we've all done variations of this, but they're new variations maybe to some of us. We have bait. Oh, oh, yay. Okay, so Galena might be having uh, her baby today. I don't know, or, or at least in the next, I don't know. She's not due for a couple weeks, but yeah. Okay, well, you got baby movement. Good, good, Galena. Art inspired by rocks and patterns. Again, you know, even if you just see somebody the way they use a brush, dragging their brush a certain way. There's just so many little tips like that that you can get that'll come to you. Now, let me go back to the Society of Idea Collector thing. When you're reading a book like this or perusing one or just even if you're just looking at one in a bookstore or or whatever or sitting here watching this and an idea comes to you write it down i cannot ever stress that enough if you don't write that idea down like you might say oh i love the way she's using black over red and it looks like a white puffy cloud above that or that looks like foam and i think oh how good how would that look as blue blue like water and that foam and then put you know write that stuff down that comes to you keep a pad of or a notebook or something even if i use post-it notes a lot and then these post-it notes get put into idea because you see my idea collecting notebooks they're humongous i don't carry those babies around and i certainly don't take them to the store but i will always have a, a post-it note pad with me so <laughs> Take, have some form of being able to write down your notes uh, when they come when ideas come to you because I can guarantee you you will forget them and we have hundreds of ideas every day and y'all have seen my society of idea collector segments and you all contribute to it as well when you have those ideas you have to write them down or a new idea will come and replace it and then another idea will come and replace it. And pretty soon, you know, three or four ideas in, you forgot that first one. Just saying. So look how she does this scribble here with uh, some white ink. Putting your skills to work. Let me just read a minute here. I'd like to think of this book as a resource that encourages you to put your skills to work in manageable ways through exercises and skill builders. When I'm working on large paintings in my studio, I use many of the mediums we featured in the previous demonstration. Some more the okay, well, she's going to get off into her process. So um, sources of inspiration again. If you have photos or ideas, I know we all take photos with our phone. I, you know, I finally, I deleted out 800 of them. I didn't even cloud them. And by the way, Jean, I did buy more cloud. Uh, I didn't even cloud them because I have so many. You know, I, I weeded out. I weeded out like 800 photos off my phone. And uh, so I still got, a, I still got 1,500. But anyway, um, so we, um, you know, Write those, but don't just take the picture. Use your pictures. Um, write it down on notes. Yeah, somewhere. If, if you put your notes in your phone, that's fine. However, remember, if something goes with your phone, there go your notes. And also, guys, there's something about, I mean, not I'm, nothing wrong with the, your immediate, you know, if you got your phone out and you're taking pictures and you're writing down in iNotes or whatever it is, you're writing it down immediately. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't just leave it there. If there's something about taking a pen or a pencil to paper and doodling. And we're going to get into doodles in a little bit. Something about doodling it out and mind mapping it out. Idea spreading it out. List making. There's something about the physical activity of writing it down and expanding that. Whether it's in your circular mind mapping, your list mind mapping, 
Uh, there's something about doing that, as you can see in all my notebooks. <laughs> uh, if you don't know where to start with a mind map, start with colors. Um, I think I put it back in my... I had pulled them out last week. Yeah. Start with colors. Just make you a blue, you know, make a color, just, just do your six or eight, ten colors, you know, your main colors to start with. You can start doing shades, hues, <coughs> and all that later. But start with just, you know, your basic yellow, red, blue, teal, lime, orange, you know, and write down every single thing you can think of that's that color. Now, granted, you can look this up. You could put in... Google Images blue and everything and and I would I would say do that but first start with your own first start with your own grabs in out of your own imagine out of your own head out of your own memory everything that you can think of and this is by no means all of them I just did as you know I, I spent one afternoon just making these charts here just to start and write down everything that you can think of that is that color then when you think you've exhausted everything then go look up you know blue in google images or where, pinterest or whatever and then write down everything else you see that you didn't write down that's blue and i like to do circular mind maps like this i do lists too i like both so you know what i like both and then ask your ask your questions who what where when why how and ask your questions and you can expand you can expand your mind mapping based off of that but like here's blue yellow and then here was a sample of taking the i think we did we picked off of a separate list uh cheese minions and a bee <laughs> here's orange red pink purple teal lime dark green gray black white peach and brown so if you do this trust me guys you will have so many ideas but the thing is here's what i found people will do things like not probably not most of you guys people will go well what do i get out of that what's the purpose of that and these are the same people that say i don't have an imagination i have no imagination i'm not creative and i'll say well do something do this do this no i'm not going to do it well hey what can i say so <laughs> you know you can't you can't force people to use ideas you can point them in the way you can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink you can't make them drink those ideas <laughs> CDC, I have a book of, of, I have a book, Meanings of Doodles, I'll get on stream one day. Okay, yeah, we're going to talk about this, and I also have a book that I've had for years in my, um, my own collection of symbol signs and signets, so we're going to incorporate some of that too, but that, I didn't want to, I didn't want to show that yet, because these are the new books that you guys got me. Yeah, <laughs> or what can you do with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyways, this is talking about sources of inspiration. So my point was, is it, you can take photos and put it in your phone, iNotes or whatever, you know, program, you know, whatever app you use to gather notes. But at some point, maybe at the end of the day, at the end of the week, go through those notes and just write down anything that comes to you. Just write it down. Don't even think about, well, what does that mean? What am I going to use it for? What is, what is that, those rocks? What, is, what am I going to do with those flowers? You don't do that. Just write, 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 write. Fill a page, fill a notebook full of just whatever comes to your mind. And that gets your brain, whatever part of your brain <laughs> that, uh, that creates and generates ideas, connects ideas. It gets that part of your brain going, okay? But it's not going to happen if it's just sitting on your phone. Just sitting on your phone in, in notes or a picture, it's not going to... You've got to take and physically do something with it. 
Yeah, you're a post-it note girl at home. Yeah, see, that's me. Because, I, I mean, I've got these post-it notes by my bed, in my purse, on my, you know, table. And and God bless Sharon L. that has sent me tons of post-it notes because I go through those babies. I'm telling you. I use me some post-it notes. <laughs> okay, creating a, la a landscape using acrylic mediums. And so she's just kind of rolling it on here. And let's just see some of the materials she's using here. Assorted acrylic paints, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, teal, green gold, a brayer, some brushes, cradled wood substrate, a painter's tape, palette knife, pouring medium, soft gloss gel medium, and white gesso. Now again, you know, you don't have to have all this stuff to just try some of this stuff. And you don't even have to have any of that stuff just to have just to put out throw out some paint. We could probably take to get uh, now again. Let me let me uh, differentiate between this finished piece on wood with uh, acrylic paint and um, sealed and ready to hang on the wall versus. Let's see if we can duplicate this. Okay, we could probably sit here with a piece of paper, some of the new, you know, our inks here, uh, and uh, a palette knife and a Posca paint pen and do this on a piece of paper. But you're probably not going to want to hang that piece of paper. You could frame it, and if you really liked it, and hang it on the wall. But she's working more toward finish, uh, hangable, sealed paintings here. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. A, a composition notebook. Yeah, I've got tons of composition notebooks. I love me some composition notebooks. <clears throat> they're, and they're, uh, you know, you can get them. I get them at Walmart when school season, you know, school starts. You can get them for 10 cents. Stack up, you stock up and get you 10 of them for a dollar. <laughs> You'll have, you know, no end of just screw. And then the other thing about using something like a composition book, and thanks for bringing that up, Pacola, uh, another um, benefit of using a cheap composition book to scribble down notes, you're not going to think, oh my God, this is a precious journal. This is a Diane Reevely $30 journal. We can't mess this up, you know. You're not going to think like that with a composition book. Scribble, scribble. You know, you see my how I write down our notes for. Uh, our syllables here. This is the syllables one that I started. Here's our 2017 Society Idea Collectors. Look. <laughs> this is how you write down notes in a composition book. That's how you do a composition book. <clears throat> and I just use head, headbands for uh, uh, keeping them all together. So here's my current three. Okay. So I don't want to lecture you too much. <laughs> yeah, post-its everywhere. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, here's everything I wanted to talk about today. I'm stuck there. Here's the little, um, talked about the rinky-dink <laughs> rink on the Olympics there. We wrote that down. Last night I wrote down a note about pineapple, pine cones, and three color combinations. Um, here's my note to do Joyce uh, and Galena tabs. I mean, and me tabs, uh, die cuts. So I, you know, and then I have all kinds of little, uh, th these magnetic bookmarks, you know. So, yeah, small. Okay, anyway, that being said, I, I write it all down. That's not even what's next to my bed. Okay, so here we go. Where, what did we leave off on? Uh, uh, creating a landscape using acrylic mediums. And then she takes you step by step through that. Creating a landscape with texture, modeling paste. And, you know, we got these. Uh, I got these last week at uh, Hobby Lobby. These uh, Bria Reese modeling paste or molding paste. There were, I only bought three colors. There's There were like maybe eight or ten colors. I just bought the three. I like got gold, black, and this teal color. So there's that. We have, you know, some of that laying around. Yeah, we'll use some. Uh, and then you can scratch into it. 
<clears throat> here's mark more mark making and here's some more samples exploring shapes and patterns here she's writing with it looks like a posca pen is that a posca paint pen or she just might call it uh, a paint pen white paint marker yeah um and doing that now we've we and i saw barb do that i didn't watch i i hate to say it, but i did speed through barb's show that she did a couple weeks ago using the mojo book using this one where she was writing with the dropper and and that is cool and you could do that with other colors we we've done it in the we've done it in the magazine this is our um mini magazine playground um M-M-I-C-P-P. -P. And where is it? Let's see. We got somewhere in here. We Here's one. And you just write with the droppers. You just take the, you know, you take your ink bottle and you just, you can write with the dropper. Right? That's fun. Well, it looks kind of like what she's doing, you know, that same kind of effect here, but with white on black. So, um, yeah, those are fun. And Barb did, a, Barb Owen if y'all don't know who she is, she worked out of this book a couple weeks ago. And again, I sped through the project. It, you know, and if you're here and watching this and it's, you know, speed through mine too. <laughs> you need to. Um, but anyway, um, writing with the droppers, it's very cool. And Barb did some more extensive projects with that type of thing. Here you can draw with the droppers. But, um, yeah, so look at doing that. Okay, so that's kind of what this reminded me of, doing it with white ink on black paper or black canvas. Uh, let's see what she's using here. What substrate is she using? I don't know. It looks just kind of like it could just be a board. Hardboard, yeah. So you can buy, and, and uh, Michael's has these... Uh, I don't know what kind of wood it is, but it's very lightweight. It's not, I don't think it's basswood, but I don't know. You can buy wood panels, and you, you will need to probably see, gesso and seal them or, or paint them three times with your black paint or whatever because, you know, they're very absorbent. Um, and and do, do your artwork on boards. I don't have room. I have my, I've got a stack of canvases that I have no place to put. They're just canvas boards. I have canvas boards this deep. And of paintings that, you know, I've done and worked on and stuff. And even a canvas, a flat canvas board takes up a lot of space. So you got to, you know, keep that in mind, whatever you're working in. But you could do similar type things like this in your art journals. Uh, especially if you have a uh, thicker, like the Diane Reevely, you know, the Ranger um, Dilusions journals that we, you know, that I do my collage in. They're thick paper. So th it would take... You could do this kind of stuff. Hey, Suze. Um, and again, her proce processes, creating patterns and grids with Duralar. And that's what you were talking about earlier, wasn't it, Jean? Duralar? So I've never used Duralar, but, you know, I'm sure it's, maybe is it something like uh, Tef, uh, what is, not Teflon. What is it that the, we use those bags, the postage, post bags, um, my, not mylar. What is it called, guys? Need one of the snapping turtles. Not mylar. What are those bags called? Not Teflon. <laughs> Somebody help me out here. And there's a lag in chat, so I gotta wait 30 seconds. Somebody, somebody. Let me put in a test. Let's make sure my chat's still rolling there. Um, Eileen said, "Yeah, Duralar. I just got some." It's plastic. Okay, so that's what Jean, uh, Eileen said. But what's that other, uh, the you know, the stuff that the uh, bags are made out of? T Tyvek. Thank you, Terry. See, I knew somebody would tell me. Tyvek. Tyvek. Yeah, thanks, Terry and Vicki. Okay, so uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if you could substitute Tyvek for Duralar. Uh, you know, you got to experiment. Okay, here's a cityscape. I love this because you know I like me some black sky and stars. So, you know, I'm going to like that. Um, I really like this cityscape. So, what is she using here? All right, she's using t clay, board t clay board tiles to, to work on. You can see right here. 
I'm not sure how big that is. They look pretty little because I'm thinking they're probably about five by five. I don't know that she says a size, but if you can look at the size of the brush there and her hand, I don't know if she has a finished size at the end, but this would be a fun one to do. Uh, I don't know that I'd have, I'd use the exact same stuff. Duralar Dura comes clear, white, etc. Thank you, Eileen. Assorted brushes, Faber-Castell pit pins or, you know, whatever kind of pen, fluid acrylics, carbon black, so we could use our inks here. Glazing mediums, and I'd have to see what she's using if I could substitute. Golden high flow acrylics, I don't have that, but again, I, I don't have a problem just winging it with something else. She has her, like, you know, these. I could use these. Uh, golden high flow dauber tip don't know what that is scraping tools a spray bottle with water and Sibilo water soluble graph graphite pencil and I'm sure I probably have one of those in here I have lots of water soluble pencils like these you know sticks and um, and I probably do have the Stabilo one as well but it would take me a minute to dig it out but anyway yeah here's my black and white pencils and my black pens and markers in my little case here it got flashed out but whatever, or got dark okay so i'm gonna put a i'm gonna put a uh thing on here so these this is another possibility We've got two possibilities out of this book I would not work on, on a clay. You know, I'd probably just work on paper or probably, I don't know, I think I even gave all my excess uh, flat canvas canvases to Cam. I like the Cityscape, too. Uh, circle Abstract. Again, brayering on some paint. Experimenting with inks and acrylics. See, this is the, uh, and this is on Yupo paper, which is that, you know, plastic-like paper. Um... Graffiti wall on Yupo. So a lot of this is she's using the Yupo paper or Yupo. Is she calling it paper? Yeah, she's calling it Yupo paper. So hopefully y'all are getting. Then here's some abstract collage. When I first started dabbling in mixed media art, collage was one of my favorite genres to create in. Something about getting lost in a pile of papers I collected or created during a printing session that did it for me. And y'all know I love me some collage. So that's always... Uh, I like my collages to be more surrealistic than abstract. See, this is, this is abstract. I like mine to be more surrealist. But that's just me. We all like our, you know, favorite things. Abstract macro picture collage so it looks like here she's got one of those pieces of wood that's or it might be a canvas let's see no it's wood those wood um they're you know they're thick like a wood not it's not a, necessarily a block because it's probably hollow inside but she's doing this one on wood but again, these are kind of to make finished wall worthy, or I don't want to call it wall worthy, but they're completely done, ready to hang by the time you're done with them. Finishing options and contributors. See, I love this. Isn't that pretty? Doesn't it just make you happy just to look at that? Yeah, I like the cityscape too. Okay, so yeah, here's one of those wood, here's one of those wood like framey looking things that she's working on see right here that's what the back looks like and she's mounting her a piece of her paper I guess her Yupo she's mounting it on one of these wood frame boxes to finish it off talks about varnishes and finishes um, pouring mediums as a you know the sealer where you can pour it on it levels off and you've got like an acrylic coating on it you like the colors that she uses yeah yeah and then this is her final words 
As this playful painting workshop comes to a close, I hope your mind is reeling with ideas of creating beautifully layered and textured abstra abstra abstracts. And she goes on there. And then here's some of the contributors. There's our Patty Tolly Parish's piece right there. Patty Tolly Parish, let's just go ahead and shout out our friend. <laughs> because we can do that. Patty Tolly Parish is a mixed media artist. And by the way, she has her own line of stencils. Uh, Patty does. And she's Inky Obsessions on Ustream, every, uh, Inky Obsessions everywhere. Patty Tolly Parish is a mixed media artist who loves to try everything and experiment with new products and tools. She designs her own line of stencils for iStencil.com and matching rubber stamps that she sells on her Etsy shop, Inky Obsessions. Her stamps and stencil designs reflect her love of geometric and abstract art. She does art demos on her YouTube channel and live broadcast on Ustream.tv. Go Ustream! Patty lives... Well, I don't know if she wants to. I guess it's not. A, she lives in Maryland uh, with her husband, Dave, and their studio pups, Mojo and Babe. Find out more at, at inkyobsessions.blogspot.com. And quote, this is what Patty said. I've always been attracted to water, salt, or fresh still or moving, ocean, bay, rivers, pools, even in my tub, says Patty. I was raised on the on the Chesapeake Bay and spent decades offshore in the Atlantic Ocean scuba diving and fishing in the Gulf Stream. I'm the most happy and relaxed when I'm near the ocean and can hear the action of the waves on the beach and smell the briny salt air. I love how you feel almost weightless and fluid when you are in the water. This feeling of fluidity is what inspired this design. It was a very messy process creating this piece, but the kind of mess I love. I usually paint the edges of my canvases with either black or white to finish off the piece, but the inky mess that dri dripped off the bottom of the canvas was too pretty to cover up. This dripping of ink is what inspired the name Overflow in this series of my work. That's what this one's called, Overflow. Um, Pacola, I read a web page. If you want to see what it's like to paint on Upo, paint some gel medium on regular paper. Okay, what's the difference between, say, gel medium and um, matte medium? Gel, because gel, there's different kinds of mediums. There's matte medium, there's gloss medium. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's, you know, I use matte medium, which is still resist the paint, my acrylic paint in my collages. You know, like, just in case somebody's watching doesn't know what I'm talking about. Okay. This one's got varnish on it, but let's go to a page here. Okay, so like this one. This Now, it's got a shiny gloss finish on it, but I, I glue things down. I glue things down with my matte medium, okay, and that creates a resist to the acrylic paint that I put on top. So I'm wondering if that, so gel medium's a little bit more plasticky. Okay, but are you talking about gloss gel or just gel? Because I use matte medium. There's no shine to it. There's shine to this now because I've, I've, I've um, uh, varnished it. But that before I varnish it, there's no shine. So this does make your paper waterproof. And it resists. My matte medium. Yeah, so I don't know if that's this, that would work or not. And I probably have some gel medium around here somewhere. But I don't know. I'd have to dig around. Because all I really use is my golden matte medium. And it resists the paint. So I can move it around and everything. And so, yeah. Okay. So, anyway. That is. And there's a couple more uh, people in here. Mary Beth Shaw. I think everybody's heard of her. Um, okay. And then the resources and everything. So, that's abstracts and ink. In acrylic and e ink by Jody Ole. And so there's that one. 
Yeah, I'm thinking you could use matte medium too, but we'll see. We'll see what we decide to do. All right, the next book that I'm going to show is Paint Mojo, and this one's by Tracy uh, Vert Vertic Vertigo. How do you say her name? Vertigo. And I, I follow her on Instagram. I think she's over in Bali or somewhere. I forget where she is now, but I've seen her. Um, I think that's her. She's, let's have a picture. Is she the one with the long, blonde, curly hair? If she is, then that's the one that I follow on Instagram that uh, is somewhere. Uh, on a vacation or a, a trip and um, yeah so she's got some really gel is the jar not the bottle okay I probably have some around here Terry I you know I really I have a big tub of stuff that Golden sent me a, uh, a couple you know you all remember when Golden sent me a whole bunch of stuff there's probably some gel medium in there hey Erin so I need to, it's up on a top shelf though, in a tub. I'll have to get up there and see if I have some gel medium that Golden sent me. The little jar, sample jars and different size jars and stuff. I'll have to see if I have that. The gel, I mean. Okay, so, but I, I was just, what my point was is, is it, does it have to be matte gel or is it gloss gel? Because apparently these UPO papers and stuff are shiny, glossy, plasticky. So I just didn't know if the matte medium or matte gel, if there's a difference, would work the same. So, yeah. Okay, so. Anyway, I'm not sure if she's the one that I'm following on Instagram. Let me look real quick on my phone. I'm thinking it's her, but it might not be. Yes, it is her. It is the same girl. She is, let me see where she is. Um, so let's see if she hashtags where she's at. Be by yourself, abundant creative. Where, where are you, Tracy? Where you be? I don't know. I don't know where she is, but <laughs> it looks like maybe Bali or something like that. Anyway, that's her. It is her. Okay. So anyway, Barb did a project out of this a couple weeks ago. And again, this one and this one are the books that you guys told me to buy. So I bought them sight unseen. This is the book that I bought for that I picked. So I think the gloss is better if you want the plasticky Yupo feel. Yeah, I would think so too. Okay, Paint Mojo. This one is a hardback, spiral bound, and this is kind of like. Oh, I should have pulled it. Is it downstairs or is it in here? Let's see. It's it's. I have another book similar to this. Ah, here it is. I do have it. It's this one here, and I've shown this before. Creative Illustration Workshop for Mixed Media Artists. This one's by Catherine Dunn, and it's the same. I think they're probably both by Northlight. No, this is Quarry. Is it, are they Quarry? Is this one by Quarry, too? Who puts this out? Uh, I'll find it. Anyway, uh, it's the same kind of thing. It's a spiral-bound workbook thing. This one had come out, and I've shown it before. This one's kind of old, 2010. So this one came out in 2010, Creative Illustration Workshop. This one, um, again, who puts it out? Northlight, yeah, this one's Northlight. And this one came out, I think it's kind of new, isn't it? So in the back, I think these, they started, well, I don't know when that book started putting their information in the back. Uh, 2014. So this one came out in 2014. All right, so we're going to kind of go through this one. Bye, bye, G. Thanks for stopping in. This is the oh, because oh, what is it? Because of the eye candy and all the samples. I'm not following you, Eileen. Well, she wants to use the collages. 
Okay, so Paint Mojo Mixed Media Workshop. So the contents. Chapter 1, Sacred Marks. 2, The Spaces Between. 3, Loosen Up, Lighten Up. 4, Dimensional Language. 5, Inspiration All Around. 6, Your Garden of Possibilities. 7, Creative Wanderlust. 8, Throwing Out the Rule Book. And 9, Come Together. And that's connecting with art communities. Okay, so this book is for, and again, I have not read these guys. Okay, Eileen. Did she do any of the projects? I'm not sure. I'm not following you. Introduction. This book is for the quiet one. Wait. This is for the quiet one sitting way up in the back of the room, hiding behind her bag of can big old it's tiny, big old canvas, hoping I wouldn't notice her. It's for the eager, wide-eyed one in the front who jumps in with gusto and delight. It's for the one who doubts his every stroke and color choice, the one who listens and learns well for a while, and then loses focus and gets impatient and does something on his canvas that sends him into meltdown mode. This book is for the one who waits for instruction every step of the way, excited to try new things, but anxious to step out on her own. It's for the one whose life is in transition or despair, the one who feels stagnant or lost, the one who is flying with joy. It's for the one who has learned grace and patience through experience, the one who has been painting for 30 years but still loves to learn, and it's for the one who never, ever picked up a brush and dipped it into paint. What an awesome, shiny mess, complex, perfectly imperfect bunch we are. All parts of the bigger equation, tiny sparks of light from the far greater source. Necessary, integral, wonderful. You are all amazing sparks. And she goes on. I am not going to keep reading, but yeah. So basically she's saying it's for everybody. I should say essentially. <laughs> basically gets so overused. So anyway... Um, again, she probably has a little story, yeah, stories. <laughs> she probably has a story for each one of these. Yeah, exactly, but it's for everyone. Uh, so I'm not going to obviously read every story. Oh, an elephant. We did an elephant a couple weeks ago. Symbol style and serendipity. Finding symbols and mar m making meaning. Then she has butterflies, elephants, and then I guess she, let's see if that one was, yeah, that's by her. She has different artists. Here's what Jesse Reno um, talks about, uh, personal iconography and symbols. And that's where that and from the doodle talking about symbols and stuff that I pulled out my old book of symbol signs and signets. And this book is, it's like a, it's a um, Dover. And it's, um, what do you call it, from their, um, you know, clip art type collection. This one's from, uh, well, it's copyright 1950. My book is not that old. <laughs> I'm just saying. This came out in, let's see. Well, it was first published in 1950. I'm not showing, I don't know what year I got it in. It wasn't 1950. But it's been out since 1950. I don't know, again, if the copyright information for this. Yeah, it just says, unabridged repu republication of the original 1950 edition. But I don't see what year this one came out in. So, I've had it a long time. And again, there's the flash of the white paper. I'm just going to do a quick flip. Uh, let me just tell you some of the, uh, look at all the contents in here. Symbols of gods and deities, astronomy, astrology, al alchemy, magic and mystic, church and religion, heraldry, monsters and imaginary figures, Japanese crests. Marks and signets, watermarks, printer's marks, castle brands, hobo signs. Anyway, all you can just see is just full of symbols and iconography if you were so inclined. I've used some of the alchemy signs in an art piece before. But look, see, look at all the different signs and symbols in here. 
And uh, so, yeah, I pulled this one out to think we might be able to use some of it in some of these projects. I love the Japanese uh, <clears throat> crests here. And also another place to get cool Japanese designs from is their kimonos. Go Google Japanese kimonos and you can see all the flowers and designs. So if you want some cool Japanese designs, go to look at their kimonos. I have a whole composition book of Japanese kimono designs. Some years ago I did that one. So there's all this marks and signets and then see they have a they have a complete list. Every symbol has a number to it so you can see what it's referring to. So it's got an excellent reference section. Yeah, yeah. Hey bunny. Um it's got an excellent reference section like this right here 950. This is Marks and Signet. This is the wine cup of symbol for pleasure. That right there. So again, you know, it's got just tons and tons of symbol signs. But what I like about it, because a lot of clip art books will put in, they'll put all this stuff in it. But you don't know, well, what does it mean? It's just pretty, you know, here's cattle brands. You know, you, would you know that that was a cattle brand versus a, you know, a sign and signet or a religious symbol or, you know, you wouldn't know if they didn't, you know, explain it to you or if you weren't well versed in deciphering signets and symbols, right? But these are cattle brands. But just look at the cool, they could be a lot of different things, right? It doesn't have to be a cattle brand or you can, um, you could tweak it to make it something other than what it is. You know, combine two or three of them, you know. So, and then here's the hobo signs. So, again, it's a it's a really cool book. And when this book and this, and this they started talking about iconography and doodling, your, uh, doodling and stuff like that, I said, let me pull that book out. So, we got that one on the side, on the sidebar over here. <laughs> okay, so this is Jesse Reno talking about iconography. If you don't, if you don't know who Jesse Reno is, and sorry for the flash out, guys. You're not gonna be able to read this anyway. It's kind of far away, but um, he he's a he's an abstract artist. That's you know he's he's his own his own person. <laughs> I've seen his. Um, he has a couple or had. I don't know. I haven't looked him up for some years, but he had a couple YouTube videos showing his process. He has a huge huge like loft studio, and he paints like ginormous, like huge mm. paintings. Uh, here's one. This is the kind of stuff he does. And more more iconography. And uh, that's, you know, I think some of the stuff he has here is what it means to him. I don't know that's necessarily, these are probably symbols he made up. Although, like, here's the pyramid, you know, the triangle, the, you know, and that can mean multiple things. Uh, but it probably is what it means to him. So, yeah. Then here is Orly Avenieri, and I, and I never pronounce her name right. I, I love Orly's Avernine, and I have a, two or three of her books. Um, and the same for, um, the other one that I, I like is, um, uh, here's Orly's, hang on, is Sabrina Ward Harrison. So if you're afraid to, here, I'm going to pull these books back out again. Hang on, let's see. Okay. Oh, not that's not one. Let's see. Hang on. Um, I'm missing a couple here. Hang on. Ah, here's one. Okay. Okay. So I'm just gonna we're gonna just do a little rabbit trail. <laughs> so Orly Averni Av Aveniri A V I N E R I. I have three of her books. Um, one is artist journals by all dip 14 artist journals. She's com compiled. This one is in my bones. And this one is one artist journal, um, 
her these are her books and I've had these for a while too I'm not sure that let me just flip here this one's 2012 2014 and this compilation 2013 so this is a compilation of all different and I mean talk about pure eye candy guys I know y'all, oh my gosh, I gotta buy all these books, you, you know, but you know, you collect them over the years, and I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a book, I don't know what you want to call it, hoard, I don't want to say hoarder, and I don't want to, well, anyway, okay, so, anyway, this one is like pure eye candy, look at this, look at this book of, this is 14 different artists that she has compiled, and I know I'm flipping quick, but I love these kind of books. And another rabbit trail. I love these kind of books. Like here's the one I have on street art sketchbook. And look, look at all the pages I have. Like inspiration. So I love these kind of books. And then this one, I believe, is her story. In My Bones, A Visual Journey. This one's her personal story so this is all her stuff uh, just a book lover okay thank you azure <laughs> so that one is her journal and then this one well let's see this one's a visual journal and i forget what this one is i haven't looked at them in a while but i need to i'm going to hold these out and kind of look at them and she is jewish so she has a lot of hebrew i love hebrew lettering and i y'all know i've uh, I was trying to, I tried to teach myself Hebrew. I'm not Jewish, but, um, I have hand carved my own Hebrew alphabet. I learned how to write it. I learned how to speak it, speak the, the uh, speak the lettering, not speak it. Like I can't speak Hebrew, but I, for some years I practiced it. And, uh, but anyway, I love the iconography of it. So anyway, she you, that's some of the stuff, some of her journals. I'm just flipping through just very, very briefly. If y'all want to see these again, I have shown these before. It's been a while. But if y'all want me to show these books again, I will. So there's those. And then the other person I was talking about is Sabrina Ward Harrison. And I've only, I thought I had five of her books, but I only see four. I pulled four off my shelf. My shelf collapsed. One of the shelves collapsed and, and fell down on another shelf and made that one collapse. So I wanted to come on. Come on, Diva. Come on. Sit up, come sit up here behind me or you'll have to go out. Come on. Come sit behind me. She started sitting behind me, but she still meows a lot. So I'm if it if she keeps up, I'll run her out. So uh, I'll try to ignore it. It's hard to ignore. I, I listen to this all day long, people all day long. It's she, you know, she, she's our rescue cat and she's, she can get annoying sometimes. But anyway, Hubster said, you better behave or you could have been a sewer kitty. <laughs> anyway, so these are uh, Sabrina Ward Harrison. <laughs> there she goes. I guess the, the threat of being a sewer kitty, she ran out. <laughs> um, I think this was her first one I don't know that I have them in order anyway so I think I have another one but uh, my like I said my bookshelves collapsed my art books in here um, that's the only books I keep in here and my art books and uh, <laughs> so I was literally sitting on the floor with piles of books around my hubster came in and goes what are you doing because I had books everywhere and they weren't just like stacked neatly like I would normally organize they were like piled and spilled and they weren't bent or anything, thank goodness. But, you know, um, do you have some sort of a library catalog system? Um, I don't have a library catalog system. I'd love to do that. But I do have my books divided up shelves like bookcases. You know, I just have those. They're just all those build yourself. Like you see here in my studio, those white ones. Even in my library downstairs that I turn my dining room into a library. It's just white, those white build them yourself shelves, nothing fancy. Uh, but I do have them sorted. Hubster and I have our books sorted by topic. So I'll have this, this like upstairs here, all my art books are up here. Not all of them. I do have one section downstairs because I don't have room in here for any more shelves. 
but I have a one section down there for some art books, but most everything I use is up here. Then I have, you know, different sections. I have a section on English language, words. I have another section on ancient history, mythology, um, you know, philosophy. I have my books divided up. Every shelf has its own topic. So, but there, are they catalog? No. No, they're not catalog, but they are shelved according to you know, my fiction, my British mysteries, my, yeah, I've got them all kind of like that. Okay. All right. So this was Spilling Open. This one, I believe, was her first one. And it was, and her pages, her pages are slick. Uh, I don't know. This one's not. Uh, but I think the others are slick. And uh, let's see what this one, I think this is the oldest. This one came out 1999. So, and in my world, in my experience, I should say, uh, Sabrina Ward Harrison is the first person that I saw do this style, this messy, spilly, writing, messy style. She was the first person that I saw do that, and that was back in 1999. A lot of people do this style now, I see, and, and variations. And I don't want to say anybody's copying. I'm not saying that. But people do variations of her style. But she was the first person that I saw do stuff like this. And this was back in 1999. Um, your knitting books. Yeah, see, I got rid of, because uh, I used to design for a cross-stitch company back in the 80s. I got rid of all my cross-stitch stuff except the books that I was published in. <laughs> I just don't, I don't cross-stitch. I didn't, I, I knew how and I did some back when I was working for cross -stitch, a cross-stitch company. But I don't enjoy sewing. I don't like to sew. I don't enjoy needle and thread. I don't, that's just me. You know, just like I don't enjoy three-dimensional. I tried. I tried to do the cigar box dimension. And I have a few of those that I did. I don't enjoy the process. And a, a few years ago, I just had to weed out mentally the things I knew I did not enjoy. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Uh, nothing. Jewelry making is beautiful. I don't enjoy the process. I don't enjoy the process of dimensionality uh, art sculpting and, and uh, boxes of, you know, I, I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy, you know, so the same thing. I don't enjoy sewing, cross stitch and all that. I love designing the patterns designing the artwork for the patterns but you know we all have to at some point there's only so many hours in the day <laughs> you know and we all go through spells you know I went through a clay spell making everything with the polymer clay and all that and I did enjoy it for a year or so but I just had to start going for exactly what I really wanted to do and um, I, ne I, I have crocheted some but I never and just Fiber arts just was never what I liked. I always liked drawing. You know, that's just, you know, I, I just like a pencil and a pen in my hand or, you know, paint and collage. And so I just had to at some point start weeding out, you know, I did scrapbooking for years because of the grandchildren. So I've got 25 big, huge, 3 inch, 12 by 12 binders of scrapbook pages. Even the kids don't want them. They may someday, but you know. Now I will tell you this: when they came over, a uh, few, I think it was maybe it was a, no, it was Thanksgiving. Anyway, so I pulled out some of the books, and they they got their phones out, were Snapchatting those pictures like crazy. So they did enjoy the pictures. They did enjoy taking pictures of themselves when they were younger and babies, and they put them on Snapchat, took pictures, and put them on their phone. But the physical books. They want no part of the physical books. As if they can have them all on their phones, that's great. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with exploring your arts and exploring everything. But at some point, you have to be realistic and tough on yourself. And say, do I really like that? Do I really like clay? Do I really like jewelry making? Do I really like, you know, whatever? And if your answer is no, then just move on. 
just don't, you know, you, you don't have to feel guilty. You learned a lot in processes. You learned a lot how other people think when they're doing that art. You learned what how it's important to other, me, you know, other mediums, other people, other, you know. So you, it's not like it's wasted. It's not like trying to learn a new medium is wasted. It's never wasted. You're learning patience. You're learning all kinds of other skills. But to do it full time, you gotta be, you gotta know. You know? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to Sabrina here. And again, this was her, in 1999, she did a lot of photo journaling. And so she would do, and she wrote real messy. I don't know how much of this is her actual handwriting and probably most of it back in 1999 uh, but she just you know she called it spilling and she would just write out and photo you know doodle and just throw it all in there and uh, it's kind of like the original smash books you know with art journaling and all at the same time so that was her first one then she came out, let me see which one was it, this one, the second one, I, again, I think I got one missing, um, <clears throat> so, this one, I'm not sure where the copyright date is, here we go, this one is 2004, so this one, I'm not, there's some, there's one in between here somewhere. This is 2004, and again, it's photographs of her journals. Photographs of what's going on in her journals, right? That's true, Azure. You might find a new way to use something you wouldn't end up, and it could create, help create your own style. That's so true. So it's not a waste. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, oh my God, I never should have done clay. I don't mean it like that at all. But I, there's only so many hours in the day, and if you want to get good at something, you got to start paring it down. Or, you know, I've done this before. Spend a certain amount. It seems like I spend four years learning one thing. So I spent four years learning calligraphy. I spent four years learning scrapbooking and layouts and compositions. I spent four years, you know, I did ATCs exclusively for four years. Um, I did art journaling for, well, I've always done some form of art journaling, writing and all that. But I spent four years hardcore learning that. So it seems like four years is, you know, how I, hey, Paula. Uh, yeah, brave. Yeah, here's, uh, yeah, Bra Brave on the Rocks. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the other one that, I, it's on my shelf somewhere, Paula. Yeah. And uh, so you can, you can do it in multiple different ways. You can cross over and do a little of this, a little of that. But if you really want to get good at something, you're going to have to spend quality time practicing that thing. So if you're going to spend quality time practicing a thing, you better set your mind to spend, you know, to focusing on that. And people think, oh, well, I, if I focus on something, I can't do this. I can't. No, you know, I don't mean it anything like that. There's some things I would love to do. I see, I have friends that do comic books. I would love to do a comic book. I have a story in my mind to do a comic book, but it's, 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 it's a whole skill set. Am I willing to spend four years learning that medium and that, that process? Not at this time in my life. Same for digi artists. I would love, because I, in my head, I can picture the things I do with my collage. I can picture that coming to life digitally or animation. But am I willing to spend four years to learn it? Not at this time. You see? So you have to... You have to know yourself. You have to focus in on what is it you really want. You just got to do it. Okay, so this one was messy. Uh, did I say 2004? Um, did I say that? Yeah, Brave on the Rocks. That is the other one right there, Paula. And I, I don't, I, for some reason it got mis, misplaced on my shelves when I uh, rearranged. Or when the shelf collapsed, I should say. So again, it's the same type of thing. And then I want to get this quickly because I want to get back to our Paint Mojo and our doodling. 
See, I told you that I would say, oh, I'll spend about an hour on books. <laughs> okay, the true and the questions. This one she made to be a journal for you to journal in. It's eye candy for me. If I want to do anything like this, I'll make my own journal with like maybe some peach colors or, you know, get some techniques or ideas from her if I wanted to do that. I will not be writing in these books. I'm not going to be cutting these up. These are my reference eye candy books. And I do have certain books I'll cut up. Some, some I won't. Some, you know, anyway. Okay, so this one came out in... And this is a Chronicle book. This one came out in 2005. Is it five or something? Two th yeah, 2005. And it was made for you to write in, to journal in, to doodle in, to go paint over. She's got a lot of blank pages and a lot of prompts and things like that that's what this one is she wants you to gesso over pages paint over pages write over pages um there's her paint palette isn't that just a thing of beauty right there oh good me <laughs> i got me on your uh, tv via the fire stick and firefox okay <laughs> well you ought to be able to see these really well then um so that's what she made this book to be. And there's a lot of these types of books out there. People that have made books like this for you to journal, paint in, and paint over. I won't be painting over it. Same for this one. This is called And the Story is Happening. This one was, as far as I know, she may have another one out. But i, I got to be honest, I've not kept up with her since this book. So I don't know if she's come up with anything. Again, it's a Chronicle book. This one came out 2012. And this one came with all types of... Again, I'm not going to use these. I'm not going to cut them up. I'm not going to stick them down in this book. But it comes with this vellum pocket. And I can't even get them all out here. But it comes with all the little word fetty you know and again this is inspiration you know you can find this stuff yourself you can make this stuff yourself you know so use it as inspiration to make your own look she hand wrote an alphabet with the probably with the dropper um yeah so again all just kind of little collagey bits they will live happily in this little envelope they used to call it a scrapbook, my mom made. Well, yeah, I've got scrapbooks back from scrapbooking before there was any pa scrapbook paper, too. You know, when I just use, I would use uh, my old greeting cards for scrapbook embellishment. So, okay, but real quick, guys, I'm going to show you this book, and then I'm going to go get a cup of coffee because my throat, hey, Miss Vicky. Um... So, anyway, this one is called And the Story is Happening. And, again, it's messy scribbly look how joyous this is i mean doesn't this just make you want to hug this book i have literally hugged this book i've hugged all her books i love her books <laughs> and again uh, i got one of them missing because i know i had five of them brave on the rocks i think's the other one so there's those so if you like that type of thing there's sabrina ward harrison and Orly Avenieri, Av and I never pronounce her name right, but those, these are some of my favorite books, along with my Nick Bantock series. Okay, so let's get back to this. The reason we got on that rabbit trail is this article is from Orly. You can follow her on Facebook, Facebook, Pinterest. I don't know that she's on Twitter. I mean, not Pinterest, Facebook and uh, Instagram. Um, anyway, it's Orly, O-R-L-Y, and her last name is A-V-I-N-E-R-I. -E so there's an article by her, and sorry for the flash out there, guys. And then here's um, Roxanne Evans Stout. I don't know that I've heard of her. She's doing a collage here. Um, then here's another exercise. Again, I don't know if Tracy's the one that did this one. And it looks like she has some polymer clay. I don't think that's carved rubber stamps. That looks like, yeah, she says personal stamps. But doesn't that look like the polymer clay where you carve into your polymer clay? 
Joyous is a great word for heart. Yes, exactly, Terry. Okay, so before, I'm going to, let me just put a post-it note here and leave the cover so you can see that while I run. My, I'm losing my voice, guys. So let me go down and get some coffee. And I want to finish going through this book. And then we're going to go through the this book. We've already gone through this book. So the girls, if you're just joining us, um, the girls made me, I mean politely suggested that I buy these two books with my Amazon birthday money and then I pick this one myself. So we've already gone through this one. We're going to go through Paint Mojo and then I want to go through this one. Okay, so give me just a minute guys to go get something for or some juice or coffee and I'll be right back. Okay, I took a bite of cherry pie and got some coffee so my throat's not so dry and scratchy. <sighs> oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, Starbuck, I did not see. I just see. Definitely meant that as a compliment. I didn't see what you said because it scrolled off. Uh, I went I went and got coffee okay so let's go back to paint mojo let's pick up where we left off and uh, yeah making marks mark making personal stamps maybe we could do something with that page again I'm just marking some of the things that we might want to do now we're obviously not gonna have time to do one of each today but um, okay but I like this I like just you know doing all kinds of symbols and stuff and again you know you can always if you don't have personal symbols you can you find them online you don't have to have a book they're online you can just look up you know sign symbols signets and you'll find and Dover may even have some pages for free oh that's okay yeah uh, when you're talking to me put it in caps that's how I know y'all are talking to me uh, so, you know, I like this kind of stuff. I usually like this kind of stuff as more of a background to my collages and things. Let's see. Let's look at an example here. Um, let's 
I start whistling when I'm looking for something. I don't know why. Let's see. This one's kind of my hodgepodge. Okay, so this has got a lot of collage. I don't have a lot of hand-drawn symbols in this one. But um, let's see if I can find one that has more. And none of these pages have been varnished. They're all in process. But you can use those stuff like that as your background. Now, my main, if I have a symbol, it's a watch or a clock because I like to. I like the element of time. Here's a time, a time traveler, a time portal. Uh, but watches and clocks represent time, and so I love putting those in. That's like if I have a symbol, it would be a watch or a clock. Um, I was trying to see somewhere where I've used. And, of course, I love stars, water, um, shooting stars, water, and space. But I'm trying to find something where I've actually doodled more this kind of stuff. But I can't find anything right now. I don't do it often. So if I don't do it often enough to find it. Hey, Wendy. But maybe that's something that you might want to... Even if you just put it in your sketchbook, your composition, throw it out journal, you know, where you're not worried about, oh my gosh, that's not perfect. You know, try doing something like this. Try, maybe we'll do something like that. Here, let me put, let me move my, maybe we'll do that to get y'all started on something. And you, look, I can even see it cut onto bookmarks. You could laminate them. Um... Of course, you can always make ATCs, art cards, anything like that. Okay, so. Personal narrative. This is Juliet Crane. And y'all know we love our Juliet Crane. <laughs> Hang on, let me find it. Um, I like to use Juliet Crane's color book images in the, in the napkin journal. So, here's our napkin journal. These are Juliet Crane uh, girls and animals. So, she has a color book, a people color book, and an animal color book. So, we used her images, and I always give her credit whenever we use them, um, and put, that's not hers, but this is. And then we'll use napkins, a Juliet Crane image, and then we paint in the rest ourselves. I say ourselves because you guys are here. Let me find a couple more Juliet Crane ones. She has a very distinctive uh, person. Uh, here, these are her. Uh, that's from her animal book. This is from her people book. <clears throat> Again, napkins, color book images, and then acrylic paint. But that's Juliet Crane. This one's not. This one's Juliet Crane. What else? Do we have any more Juliet Crane ones in here? Ah, these are Juliet Crane. There's a little owl. So, yeah. And I didn't know she was in this book. I, You know, I, like I said, guys, I haven't read this book yet. Oh, but here's her. These are her books here. Big Monster and Whimsical Animals. 34 original drawings to color and make your own. And that's what we do. So you can get that. Or I should say, that is available. <laughs> okay. So that's that's an article. There's a whole page here on, on her. Yeah, I know. Her books are cool. This one's Ju Judy Wise. I don't, I'm not really familiar with her. And then Sacred Transformation Pen. This, I think, is what, is this what Barb did? Yeah, Barb did this project. So if you want to see this project done, um, go over to uh, Barb Owen. And um, she's easy to find, Barb Owen. I think it's Barb Owen Design. Creative, Barb Owen Creative. And um, she did this project a couple weeks ago. Uh, loose, chapter 3, Loosen Up, Lighten Up, Wild Abandoned. So Technique to Free Your Creative Spirit. 
So as you see, there's different step-by-steps. Outside the square. Again, guys, we're looking, you're looking at this. I mean, I flipped through it, but not really done any serious reading on it. So, because I just got them last Friday. Exercises for coloring your senses. Uh, like, looks like here's a monochromatic everything orange. Create a color study page in your chosen color. So here's they did took orange and did everything orange. It was fun. Oh, good. Dot Dot said she watched Barb do that one and it was fun. Paint a memory. And that was, I guess that's still Tracy here. Inspiration all around. Seeing beauty in all things. This is by Elaine Cohensberg. This article. Well, did I skip a page? Yeah. The Infinite Possibilities of Failure. Inspiration as You. This is Aaron Faith Allen. Traveling Inspiration, Laura Mika. Or Mika, M-I-K-A. Palette Prints. Your Garden of Possibility, Cultivating the Life of Your Dreams. And then she's got another poem right there. Planting your seeds, unfolding dreams, little book of dreams, creative wanderlust. Exploration fuels the muse. Kila Divini Divine Divini. Wanderlust is inspiration. A lot of articles. And I know, gosh, it got really flashed out. Hang, hang on, guys. Let me reset. Hang on. Let me restore my uh, lighting here. Uh, I don't know what happened. I think the sun came, came out. And there we go. Yeah, I didn't even notice it was that flashed out. We probably missed quite a bit. <laughs> now you can see the colors and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, meditation. And, uh, you know, some people are into all that. I, I am not into any kind of meditating. That's just me. But, you know, connecting through other cultures. Throwing out the rule book. The happy print painted pages. Here's what it looks like. She's doing something with bamboo, bamboo skewers, inks. So this is kind of, it's not dripping, but she needs to drip. Oh, there's a little bit of drip right there. <laughs> uh, Paul said, Judy Wise, I'm pretty sure she was one of the ladies in your favorite book, True Colors. You know, and it's so funny, Paula, over the years, I don't, don't think it's True Colors. What one is it? Oh, I have True Vision. Over the years, I've bought so many of those books, but I've not bought True Colors. I've, I mean, I think I have every other type of book like that, but I just never, I think it was like $30 back when it came out. I never, just never invested the, I think it was $30. Maybe it wasn't when it first came out, but I think it is now to get a repop. Uh, re, re uh, journal artist. Um, mm hmm See, I have all those other ones by the Somerset Girls, like, um, like these. Here's two examples. These, like, um, Lynn, Pere Lynn Perella. Remember these guys? There's a lot of Tisha Moore type things. I'm not even sure what year these are. They're not that old. These are quarry books. This one's 2004. So, if y'all remember any of these type things, <clears throat> all right. So, I do like some of this. It looks like she's kind of spraying. Let's put a let's let's kind of mark that one. Uh, happy harmonic balance. I'm trying to give any credit to each artist. Peter Perez, 
Jess Green, Mary Beth Shaw, putting it all together. So again, if you don't follow Tracy, she's over, I don't know if she's in Bali. Where is she? Ugh. Anyway, I saw it on Instagram. And then here's all the contributing artists. Oh, there's Seth. I must have missed Seth's page. Seth Apter. There's Orly. Juliet Crane. Now, maybe Seth was... Did I miss him at the very beginning? There's Jesse Reno. Where's Seth? Where are you, Seth? There he is, 84. Ah, here he is. Somehow did we miss his page? Anyway, there's Seth. Y'all know, everyone probably here knows Seth after. Yeah, True Colors has been repo uh, republished. Thanks, Terry. And thanks for putting this in. Yeah, me too, Paula. Me too. So that is Paint Mojo, a mixed media workshop, creative layering techniques for personal expression, Tracy Vertigo. And this one, and this one by Jody O, oh, Abstracts and Acrylic Inks. We've already looked through this one. And uh, these are the two that the girls picked out for me to purchase, which I did. And then this is the one I picked to purchase. Uh, if you can doodle, you can paint. Diane Colhane. Transforming simple drawings into works of art. And her premise, I have looked a little more at this one. Um, her premise is, is using your doodles, enlarging, not necessarily always, but the one the one thing I read out of here was you take your own doodles and you enlarge them and make... Um, did you know if you sent me a card, Debbie? No, I did not. I'm not, I'm not sure. From you, Debbie? And I know there's a lag in chat, so i got to wait. So this one is, if you can doodle, you can paint. And I think Paul and a few um, got this book. And you, you, the, the section that I looked at, she was talking about enlarging your doodles and turning them into paintings. Okay, and this one's pretty new. This is 2017. I, no, I did not get it, Debbie. I did not get it. Um, getting started, doodle specifics, building your image library, and then she, there's a lot more to it. I'll read it as I flip. Doodle collections, blowing it up. See, that's the, sec, that's the chapter I read. Enlarging your doodles. So this is the one, the section I read, chapter four, mixed media and the artist gallery. And she talks about too, right, putting your doodles down on whatever you got. She's got post-it notes, scraps of notebook paper, little torn bits, and and all that. The other thing that this is what I do is when I have uh, sketchbooks or like you know my big thick the big big book. You know, I've I've sketched in that, I've torn things out, I've ripped pages out, I've glued things in, and I've deconstructed that so many times. Especially at Christmas, I sent out a bunch of, I tore pages, I, Eileen got one, she got the gr green flamingo. And so I, I've given them away, I've given uh, sketchbook pages away. So my books, you know, now... My Diane Reevely, the thick, you know, the hardback ones that, you know, I do my collage and I don't tear those up. But any other book, any art journal, anything else is, is free, is up for grabs, you know. It could definitely be torn up. Um, let's see. So here, let me take this section off. So I took some of my drawings, my sketches out of my big sketchbook. Okay, like, because it was, these were falling out. Because I was tearing this book up, I just took these out, you know. And, and the big, have the, you know, that big giant sketchbook that's this thick, I don't ever work on it on my lap. It's way too heavy to sit on my lap. But anyway, so here's some of the things like this that I'm thinking could be good doodles 
for here's some of the symbols here's some of the symbols for the alchemy symbols that we were talking about earlier these are ones for silver mercury copper tin then here's spring summer autumn and winter and then there's my cat robots and I always write notes and annotate while I'm doing stuff like this um, this is my samurai viking samurai lemur <laughs> So these are the things I'm thinking that might be fun, stuff like this, that might be fun to draw from for this, this doodle book, I'm thinking. So here's all these little doodles that she has. You're welcome, Terry. You're welcome. Uh, so I went through and... This one I did for, this was a challenge, uh, it was last summer, and it was doing a, doing a 30 days, or doing, filling a book in 30 days, filling a sketchbook in 30 days, I didn't finish it, I, and I know better than to do those things, guys, I get excited to do a sketchbook, you know, fill a sketchbook thing, but I have so many other things going on, I just, I love doing it, but if that's all I was doing, I could fill a sketchbook. But, uh, <laughs> thanks, Bryn. And hi, by the way, Fluffy. Um, so I annotate and write notes for ideas. Like this one, I had started, and there's a little 30-second video on Instagram of this one. And I think this one, I think I did these two together. This one was my Norse, and there's Norse symbols. And so... I do things like here's this one all right so here I did this compass and then I when I was making a little map I thought these look like clouds wouldn't it be cool to have to then here's where I would love to know digi well to take and do a clouded sky with the shape of the continents of the, where the Norse went the Vikings went and you know, you know like you see things in the clouds We'll have the story of the Norse and the clouds. And I wrote all kinds of things like swirl shapes, wind, spirals, tail, ship, a violin. You know, the, the, the thing on the violin, the spiral. Shells. You know, all the things that have spirals. Uh, having the Vikings and the samurai meet. They exchange idea, ideas. Sea routes, maps, ships, and armor. And uh, so I combined things of the Norse viking and the samurai and these were my ideas based on that but i had to throw in a lemur <laughs> so my viking uh samurai is a lemur and then there's some of his buddies up there there's a little cave where they might live here's some more symbol combined combined oh and then i timed them out the time of the vikings 1793 to 1240 Samurai, 846 to 1877, question mark, 646. I have different dates here for different things. So did they meet? Did they know each other? Did the samurai and the Vikings cultures clash? Anyway, so then I started doing helmets, and then the helmets reminded me of owl head. So you see, I just doodle it all out. And then here's the... Here's the uh, leather the leather clothing can be they just to me it all crosses over here's a samurai vest here's a viking there's leather straps here um overlaps lots of i wrote down lots of rivets the helmet shape based on an owl head viking owl <laughs> It's called the scroll gene. I know and you've probably told me that a thousand times. The scroll, the violin. Let me just write that down. Music scrap gene told me that. So anyway, um, and then here's the more samurai. Again, more of the same thing, just more expanded, more detail. The helmets based on the shape of the owl head, the, the designs in the leather, the filigree with lots of rivets. So I have all these kind of things. Folded, I wrote folded leather, leather strips hanging down with the little, some kind of beads or jewels hanging off. Um, 
beard notes. And then I wanted to put an antenna on him. <laughs> Why not? Uh, so anyway, these are some of the things that were out of that book. Um, and some of my list. This is my hand carved stamp. Here's my Maryland. Uh, my Maryland. Maryland mech chicken. <laughs> these all came out of that big sketchbook. Uh, because it was falling apart. Because I was tearing pages out. I was tearing pages out to send at Christmas, so a lot of the other pages fell out. This is when we went to High Museum last July. Then I started writing notes on robot chickens, making my own chicken scratch. <laughs> and then my mechanical mech Maryland there. This is I got these when we went to the uh, Andy Warhol exhibit. Uh, <clears throat> Frogs and gargoyles, more chickens, roosters. There's my Rhea drawing. Of, if y'all know who Rhea, the Rhea chicken is on Instagram. The original one passed away. Oh, this is when I was on the way. We were stuck in traffic going to the museum. So this is Giorgio. I wrote stuck in ATL traffic. Giorgio with aliens in his big hair. There's, oh, there's my Gene. This is for Gene. Back, Gene, Music Scrap Gene used to play the bagpipes. And so this was Gene's Chicken Pipe Band. <laughs> yeah, some of them were mind mapping doodles. And this is where, oh, there's my um, squirrel with nuts. <laughs> Uh, this is where I was trying to do some. This was with those uh, calligraphy pens that I got from Michaels. And I wrote everybody's name with those. And then here's some of the doodles that I did during the Inktober. My Frida. This is from the Frida exhibit. And this is these are kind of old. When was this? This was in... Where's I see the month. Where's the year? Anyway, Frida. We went to a Frida exit. Then here's some of the list of things to combine. There's my um, more museum, more ideas, more sketches. And again, all this is all out of the um, big book that fell apart. Well, it didn't really fall apart. The pages started falling out. So anyway, I said all that to say that some of these might be useful in... This book, the doodle book, <laughs> a pipe band of chickens. Yeah, a pipe band of chickens, not a band of pipe chickens, <laughs> a band of pipe chickens. <laughs> They'd be piping hot chickens. <laughs> anyway, so let's get back on to if you can doodle, you can paint. Okay, so <laughs> I wanted to do a project today. We're already at 11 o'clock. I need to get through this book in about five minutes. I <laughs> think we can get through this book in five minutes. So the introduction. Let me read a little bit of this. Doodle. It's simple, right? Anyone can doodle. It's just making marks on the page while your mind is busy thinking or listening. Your brain doodles without judgment, without thinking or giving commands, and without expectations about the process. Disengaged from your inner critic, flowing along in the moment, you are present. Like a leaf floating on a moving river, doodling is fluffy. Oh, sorry, fluffy. It doesn't say fluffy. It says fully. There's a girl here. I nicknamed her fluffy. But anyway, um, doodling is fully itself and at the same time moving with the current. Yet the word doodle bothers me because it sounds like something insignificant, immature, even trivial. It does not fully express how important this process is. Doodling cannot be measured. It is a solid wor world in itself, and it is one of which I am humbly proud. Doodling is your voice spoken on the page, and it will take you places you cannot go alone. It is simple and yet fully and full of complexity. How can doodling add to your creative arsenal? For me, doodling is intuitive, organic, automatic mark making, where there is no censoring, just doing and discovering. By following its thread, you access 
inventive shapes and forms, new image combinations, and design insights. This is the foundational concept for this book. To take that place, to take that place you find in doodling where mark making comes naturally unbidden and explode in your own creative life a doodle is already at your fingertips it's mark making when you are otherwise occupied perhaps talking on the phone or listening at a meeting it is automatic without deliberate thinking about what is good or bad it pours out of you easily from a pure subconscious place with no agenda for where you are headed I describe this process as one mark at a time, and it evolves into a conversation, so to speak, on a two-dimensional surface. I believe that doodling is a creative source of inspiration for the more serious artwork that comes from thoughtful play and the advancement into the inside of your creative life. I am an artist who doodles all the time. Whenever I have a pen, a pencil, a marker, or a drawing surface, I am doodling, always. It is my way of processing information visually, externally or internally, simultaneously or singularly, representationally or figuratively. I literally think on paper. Doodling keeps me connected to my art life and makes me feel as though I am always progressing. This book is my way of sharing the art of doodling with you. Many of the ideas began with the curriculum for my online class, Doings of a Doodle. This book can continues to explore the doodle and how it can lead to a more mature artwork. The invitation starts with a pencil. You begin with an inquiry or an observation. You simply do what comes naturally, doodling. And then find and then you find study oh then you and then you study your doodles and grow them into a larger piece, adding paint and mixed media. The doodle thus becomes a guide that leads to further decisions about composition and principles of design. Through the step-by-step -step exercises and projects in this book, a simple doodle is translated into a more comprehensive and unified work, bringing out a style that is authentically you. Your artistic style comes from deep inside you. It is there waiting, and its purpose is to be fully expressed. Just as your handwriting is uniquely you, so too is the way you touch the paper, the way you move your hand, and the doodles that flow when you are least concerned about making art. These marks, these doodles, are foundational and powerful when translated and transformed into a larger format. There are treasures embedded within, including your unique voice. I used to believe that when I shut the studio door, I was making art for me. Now I'm learning that art is bigger than that. It's a shared experience. I need to make art for you too, and we need to make it for each other. Art becomes something bigger and fuller when we all join in. This book is about discovering your fullness as an artist by courageously letting your doodles find their way into larger works. It is a place of creativity, full of potential, and an adventure in the making and in the sharing. I'm excited to help you express your artistic self by awakening your creative spirit. I invite you to dig deep into this material. Delight in the process. It might challenge you, it might open doors for you, and it just might show you how incredibly inventive of a human being you already are. So, that was the intro. You like that? Yeah. That, no, it's cool, right? And then she has Getting Started. And, of course, there's always material list, and here's, you know, material list, which probably we all have some of all this, right? Probably. Collecting doodles. And here she talks about, you know, whether it's on post-it notes or, or on notebook paper or just, you know, most of her things that I've seen her start with are just tiny little things. Oh, yes. Oh, thanks, Terry. And then, uh, so one, stop, step one is to collect. Step two is to observe. Step three is present. And then she's rearranging her doodles in different forms and fashion. Again, if you have a sketchbook, a notebook, a composition book where you have doodles, you know, if you're afraid to cut that book up, then make copies of it so that you can cut those doodles up. So you can tear them out, cut them up, expand them. Because she talks about, that's the chapter I read, chapter four, where she talks about enlarging the doodles. So taking, like, here's a, here's a little horse. 
So take that little horse doodle, blow it up on your printer, and have a you know a decent size something to work from, or combine combining different doodles into you know like my samurai and Viking, and and turn that into you know a painting. Doodle specifics, building your image library. Uh, I'm going to scan this. Start by making marks and see what happens. Allowing yourself. So it's just she's talking about just starting and building your doodles. Here's the different line qualities, different pens, pencils. Here she is working on a huge. So I think there was another picture of her working on a big, I mean, this is on a wall here. But look, she's got all kinds of little post-it notes and things. So you can see just little whatever drawings. Let it loose, small, medium, and large doodling. And she has different exercises for that. Here's drawing on post-it notes. Of course, she calls, they call them sticky notes, you know. Um, working on sheets of paper, scribbles. Here, this is where I saw the, she's working on a full-on wall there. It's they're rolls of paper. She's got rolls of paper. It looks like they're magnetized or stuck somehow. Uh, she's got them stuck to the wall, but they're uh, like a roll of paper rolled out. You can see it better there. See, there's one roll, two rolls, and then she just starts doodling on it. Here, there we go. There's a nice big picture. And see that they're just diff it's taped, taped to the wall up there. Isn't that cool? And you wouldn't have to go this big. Just get you one of those uh, posters like the, you know, the kids poster board. Get you a kids poster board if you don't have room. I don't have room to tack it to a wall. But I could keep it handy and just start doing, take a Sharpie. Take a big Sharpie marker and start doodling on it and collect your doodles that way. On what, And every time you just feel like doodling, pull that one big poster board back out. What's the difference between doodles and sketches to me? Um, sketches to me are more specific, like, um, like I want to sketch this pair of scissors or I want to sketch a pen, or, you know, here's my magnifying glass. It's Or in my head I go, okay, I, I want to draw a lemur, whether I have a reference or not. I'll just, you know, that's a sketch. A doodle to me is, is not item specific, you know? It's not like, oh, I want to draw this, or I want to draw that, or I want to, in my head I want to draw a lemur. It's just more like mark making to me. You know, I mean, you could probably find some kind of organic things in there, like some flowers or trees, but mostly it's not anything. Do you see? Or if something does come to your mind, if you're doodling, let's just say you're doodling and coloring something and making some lines and all of a sudden something does come to you and I go, oh, you know, and that looks like scissors. I wouldn't be afraid just to then draw some scissors if it started looking like it, but that's not, for me, doodling is not a specific thing. <clears throat> Circles and lines, see? Now, I'll give you an example. Okay, so let's just say I doodled this. I doodled this little thing, and as I doodle it, now it looks either like a birthday cake, so I'd want to put flames on here, or it looks like a caterpillar, so I'd want to put a couple of eyeballs on there. You see, then I might make it into something. Again, here's taking it further. Revisit your compositions and let each doodle grow from its starting place. You can continue with the original pattern or add circle shapes in contrasting si sizes and directions. Switching mark making tools can help draw lines that are thick and thin. And so again, she starts with this, she starts connecting, she starts doing more, see? And I, she, she's the first to say there's not a rule. Oh, well, now you draw, got to draw a line because you drew a circle. You got to connect those squares. She, you know, you don't, it doesn't work that way. Here she started with this little thing here, and I think she kind of progressed into doing a row of trees. Here's just a bunch of scribbles. 
um, <coughs> on envelopes. And here's this one, and I didn't read the whole thing yet, but I just read the uh, quick excerpt here. Doodle mm. while reading. And I annotate while I read. I write notes in my margins of my books or in another, if depending on how many notes I want to take. Like if you're studying something, you, you're probably going to need, you know, not just markers and annotations. You're going to need a, a book to write notes in. That's where like a lot of Moloskinas that I pile up, you know, I don't write in them as much as I used to. I write in other journals and notebooks now but I have tons of uh, the Moleys that if I was reading something I would take notes here's kind of the same thing but instead of taking notes you draw so while you're reading whatever you're reading doesn't matter if you're reading test it out with a magazine article read a magazine article Pick one at random. That would probably even be better so you don't have a preconceived idea. Pick a magazine article, and it doesn't even have to be something you like or dislike. Just open the magazine, go to the article, and, and doodle while you read and see what happens. Not, not necessarily an art book, but just, you know, a book on, you know, a travel magazine. You know, if you have a magazine on, uh, you know, people traveling and they went, say, to Peru. And you open it up and there's an article on Peru. Start doodling while you're reading. You know, they might talk about the Andes. You might start drawing mountains. You might, or you might just start drawing triangles. You might, you know. So try that. Take a magazine article. And try to doodle while you're reading it. Here she's doing a full-on book, in which you can do that too. Yeah. Okay. Pick a theme. Uh, this is called directed doodle. So then, like here, she has chairs. She has cups. She has, looks like houses. So here she's doodling all one specific thing. flowers, leaves, trees, and then here she starts coloring in backgrounds around it. You see, so you can, you know, they're expanding. Here looks like she took some cats or dogs, some animals and started, you know. Yeah, this is the book here if you're just joining us. If you can doodle, you can paint by Diane Colhane, C-U-L-H-A-N-E. Uh, landscapes. And see, do you notice how she starts with these little thumbnail drawings? This is how she starts with them. And this is, if you have any, any ideas that you want to expand on. Let's say we do a mind map and we pick three things. You start with something real quick like this. Just, you know, just the idea. You know, that's, that's all it is. Just the idea. And then you expand on. This is not even a, it's just a thumbnail. Um, and again, here she's done birds. Uh, taking it further to the abstract. Here's where she's doing splatters and scribbles. And kind of like the Paint Mojo book. Taking a line for a walk. So I guess she just starts with one long line. Just don't pick up your pen. I mean, I'm guessing. I haven't read this one. And just doing lines, lines, lines. And then now she's painting in certain sections. like a me wrong um doodle collections and folded books and revamped journals this chapter will up your doodle game by first preparing the paper ahead of time with some texture color color pencil i'm just reading the images recorded she calls these her look books Think of making these as a gift to your doodle art and a way to set yourself up for your next artistic success. So she has she makes little books of doodles. I doodle on post-it notes and then I take these and I put them in my binders. That's just the way I work. But here's another idea. She has little tiny books. Folded or sewn. You could make your um uh, we take a make a zine. Let me get a piece of paper real quick. Do I have one handy? Uh, I need a piece of notebook paper or something thin. Uh, let me find a thin piece of paper. Ah, here we go. If you want to make a zine, just to keep 
uh, handy if you don't like carrying post-it notes. To make a zine real quick, you just, let's see here, do this, do this. I'm going to fold that in half and then fold this in half again. So uh, let me show you the folds. Okay. So all you do to make a quick little pocket zine, fold it in half. I think you can see all the lines there. Fold it in half, half, and half again, and then open it back up so you can see all your lines, right? Then all you do is take an X-Acto knife or scissors, whatever you feel comfortable with. Let me get a cutting mat here. And use a ruler. I'm not going to, but use a ruler. And see these two middle sections? Those two middle sections you cut right down the line on. Just those two middle sections. Okay, and then all you do is pop this open like this. And fold it all out. And you can do it much neater and all. But then you have a little zine. Eight pages. So you have a little eight page. So if you just carry this around, carry this around for one day with a pencil or a pen. I like using pens because you can't erase. Um, and carry this around for one day and just doodle on it. And then, then go from there. Just collect a day's worth of doodles. Okay. Folded or sewn books. <laughs> So anyway, I don't know if that's what she's going to go for, but uh, she's got she's got them sewn and nice and painted. You could do that, too. But, you know, again, here's just what I think about it. If you just go to all the trouble to do all this, sew a book, paint a book, make a book out of it, you are not going to just feel free just to come in here and, you know, do this. You won't do that. You're going to be too afraid you're going to mess it up. Now, if you want to make something, if you want to take your, your old sketchy doodles from post-its and whatever, and then transfer that into something made into a zine or a booklet or a book or whatever, that's different. But just to collect doodles, if you have gone to all the trouble to make a pretty little book like this, you're not going to just come in here and scribble on every page. And just, you know, let's just see what I can do here. Oh, that looks like that might be a tree. You know, you're not going to do that if you've gone to all this work. Um, and then, yeah, sorry, Dot. Wish I could do something about that. Um, then taking it further. Again, look, that's a very cool little book. But that's not the first, you're probably not, maybe hers, because she does it all the time. Her very first initial scratchy doodle, you see? Okay, revamped journals. I think this is where they're uh, deconstructing journals. Yeah, look, she's painting over a bunch of pages right there. See, she's painting over her notes. Is this interesting to you guys, seeing these books? I hope it is. Here's another one where just taking, uh, as Paula would call, working through the uglies. <laughs> and just going over, brayering over, you know. Here's a bunch of just splatter. There's some coffee uh, stain paper. Spray paints, doodling on top alphabet letters again you could use stencils and we have tons of stencils that would be an excellent way for you to get started um, on a doodle something here let me see um, let's just take this one oh, okay now let's take a letter okay, let me get my let me get my pack of stencils out here I was looking for the letters. Ah, here's some letters. This is an old one. Look, they're all they're all stuck together. <laughs> Cause I put them away wet. Don't judge me. Okay, so here's let's stuck to that. Okay, let me unstick these. I know this is probably OCD and some people out, but yeah, they get used this way. If I'm too precious with my stencils, they won't get used. Okay. So, 
and then and, and I would suggest even doing them backwards so that they're not an upside down or right side up here we get another piece of paper here's where like we did that other thing this morning that uh, smack and drag thing this morning I wasn't gonna stop and do this but I can't help it now we're already into it um, <laughs> Working through the uglies. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what Paula. Okay, so you know, take and um, spray ink or and let me just go ahead and get a spray ink. Hang on. Now, I'm not gonna let it dry and all that, but I just want you know, let's we can do two things here. So let's take half of it here, and I'm I'm hoping these aren't clogs. I haven't used my di my dilutions in a while. Okay, so let's do that, and then let's, it's got ink on it, right? So I'm going to take this ink and turn it over and smash that down to get the excess ink off the stencil on this side. So pull your stencils out if you haven't used your stencils in a while, like me, <laughs> or your rubber stamps. Okay, now I'm going to take a baby wipe and just wipe off the excess there. That's as clean as that's going to get for now. But I've got my baby wipe full of ink. So let's just go ahead and ink that up. Let that dry and then start doodling on this. Okay. This is just some ideas. I don't know that she's going to do all this, but, you know. All right. Mm. Those alphabets right there just inspired me to do that. Do it with stamps. Your rubber stamps. Just, you know, get you out an alphabet stamp. Like, um, or any stamp set, actually. But, look here, i got an alphabet stamp here. All right, let's see. Let me get out... I don't know if I really want to use my stays on my acrylics. Where's another stamp pad? Hang on, where's my other stamp pad? Hmm. Well, I don't know where it is, so I guess I will use my stays on. Again, let me find a piece of paper. Okay, here's a piece of graph paper. All right, so we've got some graph paper here. Take your stamp set. And y'all know I'm not a good stamper, but I'm going to stamp out the whole alphabet here. And then I'm just going to and clean it off as best I can, like, just by stamping over and over to clean it off. Okay? Now, go scribble. Now, um, doodle on this. Okay, use that for a doodle. What time is it? I might have to re stop and start. Okay, I got about I got about ten minutes before we're we're gonna run out of time. So let's finish this up and then I'll do uh, we'll do another little project after this. Okay. All right, here's the chapter I read on blowing it up. Taking um, your doodles, enlarging them on your copier, and and working with them, like here. Or, you know, and she says, too, you could either just redraw them yourself or enlarge them on the copier and then redraw them from, from that. Um, and then she'll use that. Yeah, speed up flip. Yeah, Mac. Um and then start adding painting and coloring to them. Here's adding color. There's a color wheel. Creating a final presentation. And then here's mixed media. Copy yourself. Hand-eye coordination. Yeah, so here she took one of her doodles and she's just looking at it and redrawing it. And you notice she's not trying to do it exactly. She may even not want to do it exactly. She may want to rearrange a tree, a bush, an animal. 
so that they're not exactly the same. Or you could try to if you, you know, want to practice that. So she's gone from this little doodle and now she's over here adding it onto a painting. You see? How cute is that? I love that. It looks like a children's book illustration. Grid painting. So she's doing different doodles in grids and turning that into a painting. That looks like fun. Theme painting. Again, she took a doodle and turned it into a painting. And again, look guys, they're, they're, um, you know, they're not realistic. It's, you know, it's, she's not trying to draw a copy an exact bowl of fruit here. See all her little doodles around the edges? See her little thumbnails around the painting? Isn't that fun? Abstract painting mixed media. So here again, now she's doing more like what we saw in Paint Mojo. You know, the abstract and, and then uh, abstracts in acrylic and ink. <clears throat> Can you use your doodles? This way helps to relax the doodling and playing in the first place. Your sketch or doodle doesn't have to be finished piece of art. Exactly. And everybody, that's why I tell everybody at least have a composition book. Have a composition book where you can do anything you want in it. If that's all you did, you know, scribbles. Something that makes you not so precious with it. And composition books, you know, are literally a dime a dozen at school time. You know, um, or notebook paper. Or, you know, something that you do, it just doesn't matter if you scribble. So here she is taking a bunch. There's look at all her notebooks. There's sketchbooks. So draw inspiration from your own stuff. But again, guys, you have to not be afraid to just write and doodle and jot down and annotate and 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 just go for it. Most people are they're they're afraid to even do that. They're afraid to take just a piece of notebook paper and just write out whatever you know like this right here so i'm seeing all right so that looks like a tree and that looks like a cliff and then maybe there's water there's a waterfall i mean just little notes like that and and filling up books and books and papers and pages and and composition book after composition book of doing stuff like this that may not seem like anything right now but in two months you're going to go back and that's going to mean something else totally. And you're going to get another idea from that. And then that's when you go over here and you start mind mapping out that. I, you know, there's just, but unless you do it, you just don't get it. That's why I try to explain about mind mapping. Unless you actually take either a list version of mind mapping or the circle, you know, out, you know, build out kind of uh, from a circle mind mapping unless you actually do it literally pick up a pen and do it you won't get it you think you got it in your head you think oh okay so I'm going to do the the mind mapping with the um, colors remember I showed you all this at the beginning the mind mapping with the colors oh I already know everything that's, that's blue I already know everything that's pink. I have it in my head. I, you know, pink lemonade, a pig, a pink panther, an eraser, a tutu, shells, flamingo, strawberry ice cream and frosting, a grapefruit, a watermelon, bubble gum, candy hearts. I already know all that's in my head. What good is that going to do? How's that going to mean anything? How's that? What is that going to be? It's not, it's not be anything. And so unless you actually sit down and do this kind of stuff, guys, you will not get it. And I just can't stress that enough. I know I'm getting on a soapbox now. I better quit. You, you will not understand it at all unless you do it. You think you will. You think you got it in your head. You don't. You don't. <laughs> okay, so then here's the artist gallery. Then I am going to stop, and I will reboot my computer too just in case... That helps somebody. Dot was the only person I saw having issues. I don't know if anybody else does. 
Um, Eileen says, when I took the class with Diane Wakely, we scribbled on a sheet, then made a viewfinder, and then we picked a portion of the scribble and used it to do abstract painting. Exactly, Eileen. And I, you know, I've shown y'all how to make, um, do I have it handy? How to make a viewfinder. I'm looking around. Did I, where did I put it? It's in one of my notebooks here. But all you have to do is take a sheet of paper. It's really easy. Let me get a blue paper. This is just a scrap, but it'll work. Just take you a, and it can be different sizes. Let me just kind of cut this one down. I had a black one here somewhere. Just take and make you two L's essentially. Make you two L's. <clears throat> I need something bigger here. Let's uh, let's take this bigger book here. Make you an L. Make you a, a viewfinder. And this works in for multiple things: books, magazines, outside. You take this outside with you and look at the trees. And you can you can make it bigger or smaller. And you're focusing in on certain things. This is what Eileen's talking about, a viewfinder. See? So take your scribbles or your doodles and do that. See? All you need is two L's. Okay, so we're going to have to stop because we're going to run out of time. So here's the uh, other uh, artist samples in here. And again, these are reminding me of those in the symbol book here, the Japanese crests. You can take anything, anything, and doodle it. You know, if even if you just took a clip art book and just found a symbol or a sign in there, and it may, don't try to necessarily copy it, but try to um, doodle it. So say, I'm not going to try to copy this exactly. I am just going to, you know, make my own doodle of it. You know, and I'm, I'm looking at it, but you don't have to try to copy it. Maybe not lift your pencil. Say, do stuff like that. Just mark make. All right. So there we go, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed the If You Can Doodle, You Can Paint by Diane Colhane, Paint Mojo by Tracy Vertigo, and Abstracts in Acrylic and Ink by Jody O. And then again, we've shown this before. I didn't show it in depth this morning, but Creative, creative Illustration Workshop for Mixed Media Artists I've had for a while, Catherine Dunn. And it's another one of those spiral-bound mixed media type inspiration type books um, but these are the ones that I got for my birthday from you guys so hope y'all enjoyed that I'm going to stop this video I am going to take a quick break guys and I will reboot that means when I come back you'll have to refresh but maybe that'll help some of you if you're having issues with chat so thanks for watching and I'll save this and I'll be right back